Hi, my name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the co-owner and creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video, and in this video, I want to talk about the very important topic of codependency, especially as it relates to the anxious preoccupied attachment style individual. So if this is the topic you're super looking to dive deeper into as you see this series and you're realizing like, oh my goodness, this sounds like me, um, I highly suggest joining the school. We have scholarship options available. We have a 25% off coupon code um, that's with you, all one word. We have our lifetime membership that's like 50% off. Basically, we're trying to do a lot of different opportunities for people to support them during like this kind of crazy time that we've all experienced in 2020 to a certain degree um, and just provide like an online community and, and basically a space where at least you can look back hopefully during all the craziness and be like, that was really a wild year, but at least I found myself and I worked through all these things during this time and I got into relationship with myself when I was forced to spend all this time in isolation or alone. Anyways, those are my hopes, um, best case scenario wise, but um, just, you know, we, we totally understand that it's a challenging time and I personally I just want to um, support our community however we can. And if you have any suggestions about that in the comments, you can leave them below because um, I, I have an amazing team who organizes them for me and then tells me and we, we sort of build out suggestions accordingly. So anyways, um, so lifetime membership link is in the description box below with you coupon code in the description box below. And I have a specific bundle for overcoming codependency up on the school website um, if it's a specific area of your life you want to target, okay? So let's talk about this discussion of codependency for the anxious preoccupied individual specifically. So as we've defined in the earlier parts of the series, um, a codependency is basically excessive or emotional, um, excessive emotional or psychological reliance on a partner. Um, and it can sometimes be somebody who requires support, but at a deeper level, there's basically a pattern of relationship behaviors that forms sort of like an addictive component between two people, usually because of subconscious fears or needs. And this goes on to blur the lines between self-identity and personal boundaries. And then long-term, that tends to create dysfunctional and toxic patterns in a relationship because of the different perceived imbalances um, that are the result of all of that stuff to begin with. So when we talk about codependency, it's this idea that the other person is obliterating your sense of self. And it's usually not because the person's like actively obliterating the sense of self, like they're like attacking you or yourself, but it's usually because we have such deeply embedded subconscious fears around loss of the person or being disconnected or disliked or excluded or whatever core wound is really governing your psyche when it comes to how you relate to others that as a byproduct of being so focused on escaping from that fear or trying to get away from that pain because the brain is more wired to avoid pain than it is to seek pleasure or comfort. As a byproduct of that, what we will see is that the self is obliterated because it's like the sense of self, the identity, the prefrontal cortex personality type self, and the limbic system emotional need type self. Um, and what the self has left over is its survival self. And the really important reason that the anxious preoccupied individual specifically tends to be in a space where um, their sense of self is obliterated by relationships is because they are so largely ruled because of past traumas um, by the fear of abandonment that they are willing even to give up their sense of self to try to have attachment or connection because at a subconscious level, their mind is telling them, the lack of abandonment equals safety. Connection equals safety. So let's prioritize connection as a survival need instead of as a, a self-esteem need, a, a belonging need, a community need, which when we look at like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, for example, tends to you know, be further up the pyramid. And so because there's been this link made in the subconscious mind of the anxious preoccupied person between connection and safety, you basically have the tone set for the most strong version, for lack of better words, um, of codependency to be possible. So I really want to talk about like the details of how this actually takes place. So number one, anxious preoccupied individuals, yes, will be more focused on other people's feelings than on their own feelings. There will be exceptions to this. 
Um, the one major exception that's very prevalent is when they're um, fearing abandonment. Sometimes they forget to even see another person's feelings and they're very consumed with their own feelings and what people should be doing and feeling to sort of, you know, get them safe again, which is just like any other human being when they're going through a perceived survival crisis. You know, your ability to really focus and, and see and hear other people becomes diminished because you're in a survival state, right? So then you're in a space where you're literally trying to make it through on your own and, and you have to be become self-focused when you're in that space. That's how your brain moves through situations. But the big difference is when there's a real survival crisis versus a, a perceived survival crisis, right? Like maybe if somebody's pulling away in a relationship and needs space, it's not actually a survival crisis, but because your subconscious mind is reprojecting that fear, which just so you know, if you don't already know this and you're newer to this channel, that fear comes because when we are born, we have a biological need for connection and we have a biological fear of abandonment. It's one of the only three fears that we're born with. And so when we come into this world, if there's some kind of incongruency in our parents or caregivers, or if there's some kind of um, abandonment wound where a parent goes off for a few months or um, a parent goes you know, missing a little bit, or if both parents are working a lot, or if there are consistent emotional abandonments where there's inconsistency in how the caregiver is really there, then what you're going to see is that these biological fears at that time um, are triggered. And the subconscious mind of a child's psyche goes, oh my goodness, I could be abandoned. If I'm abandoned, I'm not going to survive. I don't know how to eat or feed or clothe myself. And, you know, these things happen at a really young age. And of course, they can happen all the way at any point in our lives and our attachment style can be reprogrammed. But a lot of anxious, preoccupied individuals do tend to have these original imprints probably before the age of eight. And then definitely at a time where, um, you know, with exceptions, but largely at a time where, um, individuals are completely dependent on their caregivers for survival. So the subconscious mind, especially of the anxious individual, has confused and intertwined survival with, with safety, or sorry, connection and, and togetherness with safety. And so all these things sort of stream off of that. Lack of approval means I'm going to be disconnected, which means I'm going to be unsafe. Um, being excluded means I am disconnected, which means I'm unsafe. Not belonging, being disliked, all of these things usually are very much intertwined with this concept or idea that you're actually going to be missing safety as a result. And this is where this can be one of the toughest um, experiences for an anxious preoccupied individual where they don't know that they're codependent or they don't know that they are, their attachment style is anxious preoccupied. And, and here's why. So Number one, if you want to stay safe, you're like, oh, I have to feel, you know, for others more than myself. I have to focus on others more than my own feelings and their feelings, but specifically their feelings about you. So it's not, you know, necessarily the same as like the fearful avoidant who's like so worried about the other person not being okay because their experience in childhood was usually like, if the person caretaking me isn't okay, I'm not safe. The anxious preoccupied is like, if I'm not getting that approval, that connection, that consistency, if this person doesn't like me or they're not attuned to me, I'm unsafe. And so we'll see as a general rule that the anxious preoccupied in their adult life tends to place a much stronger emphasis on approval because of its subconscious links to survival in a different way than the other attachment styles. So that's a really important thing to note. Also, the, the feeling of exclusion or being disliked will definitely hurt more because, again, linked to survival at a subconscious level. And remember, these are beliefs. These are just imprints. These things can be programmed out the same way they were programmed in. Um, so, so that those components are so strong that because they're, they have those survival um, sort of like links to them. Now, it's also important to recognize that um, the anxious preoccupied because of some of these early imprints largely goes on in their adult life to define their sense of self and their self-esteem or self-worth through the relationships they have around them. Not completely, but largely and much more than any other attachment style as a general rule. So what you're going to see as a byproduct of this, right, is that the, because there's this traumatic fear of abandonment that's governing the self, not only does this person usually define their sense of self more through others, 
but they have a very difficult time thinking that they should be doing anything otherwise, right? It's almost like their own fear of lack of connection and its links to survival enable them to keep prioritizing other people above themselves, right? And to feel like doing something otherwise, AKA setting boundaries, speaking up, meeting their own needs, taking time to themselves to reflect daily. Usually the, the initial reactions I get from most anxious preoccupied individuals historically, like let's say they come in to work on themselves and they're like, and usually when I'm like, oh, do you know self-reflection or you have these things that you can do for, for the relationship to yourself. Usually the feedback I get is like, can I do it with somebody else? Or like, I don't want to do that by myself. I don't like being alone or, and, and it's because inherent in that message is this individual's fear. So inherent in the concept of going and spending time alone, it means that naturally is going to take time away from other people, which are the things that you're trying to use to survive, right? So there, there's sort of this like extra layer of protection over the codependency for the anxious preoccupied individual that there isn't as much of to a degree for the fearful avoidant and definitely for the dismissive and definitely for the secure. So it's, it's important to recognize that as well. And so these individuals often make justifications for prioritizing other people over themselves, not realizing this extremely important factor, which is if I have a need for, for connection and if I'm unable to fill that cup myself, that creates an inherent dependence on, upon other people, which is the most insecure thing we can ever depend on in completely, you know, completely in a polarized manner, not because we shouldn't trust people and love people and receive from people and feel like we can rely on people, <clears throat> but because the nature of being a human means you can't always 100% of the time be there for everybody and be perfect. And so if we're deriving our survival needs from imperfect things, there's naturally going to be challenges that come with that and let down. So unless we're able to fill half of our cup ourselves, which is what healthy interdependency requires, is that we can understand our own needs as ourselves clearly and know who we are at the subconscious core, um, meet our own needs ourselves, communicate those needs to others and receive them from others because often when a person is missing multiple parts of that if you can imagine it's like a quadrant people are either missing their ability to define their own needs they're missing their ability to meet the, the needs for themselves maybe they are good at defining meeting and communicating but then they block themselves from receiving there's all these different interesting dynamics in when we talk about needs but, um, and we have like a whole in-depth needs course about this and an advanced needs course coming up very soon about all of those four quadrants in particular um, and how we can meet our own needs and, and sort of manage each of those parts. But, um, but what I want you to recognize here is that um, if you are in a space in your life where you're blocking any of those things, if you think that um, it, it's always going to be your cup getting filled from the outside in, you're always going to be operating at a lack. Okay. The, the analogy I often use is it's like if you have a gas tank and you can't get your own gas, you're always relying on people to come drop it off or pour it into your car. Then when people don't, it's really scary because you're actually helpless, right? But if you can go to the gas station yourself and fill your own tank halfway and, you know, and then you can have people come in and benefit and fill up your gas tank more, then there isn't this inherent dependency on people, which means if somebody pulls away or pulls back, it's not as scary. It's not quite the same thing, right? Because it's not actually going to feel like it's the end of your survival. And something else that's really important to recognize is if I, as a human, let's pretend, derive my sense of self, self-worth and identity from all of the relationships around me, who my friends are, what my relationships are like with my family, what my relationships like with my romantic partner, if I'm defining myself through those things primarily, not like tertiarily or as a part of my identity or, or um, a beautiful component or benefit or you know things like that, but as my sense of self, then when somebody is is not available emotionally or when somebody um, you know can't be perfect or show up or if there's exclusion or if there's a miscommunication or a fight or a conflict. The reason it's so scary for the anxious preoccupied person is because literally it feels like death to the self. It feels like ego death, like death to our identity, to our personality, because our personality is so hyper dependent on outside in instead of inside out and having this nice 
um, you know, sort of energetic exchange in terms of our time and energy and emotions and all these different things between multiple sources. So this is, this can create a lot of pain and, and challenge big time, unless we are able to go in and really recognize these components within ourselves. And so not only are usually thoughts and emotions more externally focused on other people and their relationships and their lives first and self second, um, but often the anxious preoccupied person feels very justified in putting people ahead of themselves, ignoring their own boundaries, releasing their own um, needs and repressing even and prioritizing other people because overall they prioritize not being abandoned over feeling connected and empowered in the relationship to themselves, right? It's like the, the overall fear of abandonment takes precedence. And so if I have the subconscious association or belief pattern that if I do express my needs or I do set boundaries, I'm increasing my chances of abandonment. I'd rather just not do that at all, but it allows that vicious cycle to stay alive. I don't fill my cup. It's scarier to be abandoned because then my cup's empty and then I'm more dependent. And then I keep being more dependent, but then I'm more triggered and then that creates more chaos. And then I'm still more, and, and then I'm more afraid of abandonment and it goes around and around in a circle. But you can actually break that cycle by getting really clear on who you are and what you need, learning specific strategies to meet your own needs and show up for yourself at least half of the time, then communicating effectively your needs to others and then practicing receiving in a way that reprograms so you don't have to feel like you're a burden or that you're going to be abandoned. And then of course, also working on the, the core wounds and reprogramming the fears of abandonment, fears of being alone, the wounds around being excluded, disliked, not approve, approved of, things like that to begin with and even equilibrating the belief that approval is exclusively positive because there are downsides um, to, to focusing your life on, on being approved of by others, right? That can be a huge detriment to the relationship to self. And that's a big thing that anxious, preoccupied individuals often face um, or are challenged by. And so this, I feel like is already turning into a long video, but um, I really just wanted to give this like context of understanding around codependency as a whole, because it's such an important topic. And again, like if you want extra support, I can make more videos around this stuff. There's so many videos I want to create. So like every day I have like 50 new video ideas, but, um, but you know, what you can do is like literally, and we have scholarships available. If this is something you're like, I really want to focus on go do the needs course inside of the school, do the emotional mastery and belief reprogramming course, the boundaries course, the um, codependency course itself, and then the strengthening self-identity course. It's like how to bring that self out into the world and share it and re be received and all these other wonderful things that we deserve to have so that we can have thriving relationships and so that they can last. Codependency hurts relationships, it ends relationships. Um, prematurely and in pain. And so when we get to transform that, we also increase the, our chances of having healthy relationships that have like longevity to them and that can last and keep growing and thriving because of the fact that we get into healthy dynamics instead of toxic dysfunctional dynamics justified in the name of, of creating togetherness. And so it's sort of like the wolf in sheep's clothing codependency because it might look nice or romantic from the outside, but there are dramatic um, downsides to it. So I hope this all makes sense. Um, and please let me know if you want to see more about this. I think it's such an important topic. I'm really excited to share more about this on this channel. And thank you for watching and for subscribing. And I will see you in the next video.